Hello everybody, this is my uh, video on installing a Micro Air Easy Start Flex on a 3 ton residential AC unit manufactured by um, Bryant, uh, maybe actually manufactured by Carrier, they're uh, under the same company. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because, um, you know, on YouTube there aren't a whole lot of uh, video on installing on a carrier or a Bryant unit. I don't know if that's just a regional thing. Um, another reason is that even if you do watch those videos, you'll notice that the the wire color codes, it's all over the place. I mean, black wire is always the same. That's one leg of the 120. But the red, well, sometimes it's white. And then you see the, the power going into the compressor. Our mine is yellow. The hermetic is blue. It's just all over the place, and if, if you see other um, videos, you know so that. So you can't go by what color. Um, another reason is I notice when this is starting up, it's a pretty uh, violent pr startup. It's it's loud. I'm gonna say it's a bang, but it's kind of like I kind of equate it to. Um, Starting a car with your foot on the accelerator, smash down. It's just not good for the compressor. Uh, so, if I these starts should uh, reduce the number of amps required to start up and therefore um, prolong the life of the compressor. The third thing is, if you have a backup generator, because of these start will reduce the number of uh, amps required. You could get by with a smaller generator and uh, and or uh, power bank so this is why I am doing this okay so the first thing you want to do is disconnect the air conditioning unit from um, the power there's two ways you can do it. You can go to the electrical panel and turn off the circuit breaker, or you can go to your disconnect box and pull the fuse out. Or you could do both. Probably should do both for maximum protection. Now to show you how this box works is that it has a latch, a tab here that you can put a, a padlock under on it so you could, uh, nobody could get inside. But what you do is pull, pull that tab back and this is a, a door that swings this way. So you push the door down and then you swing it out. And what you see is this fuse will be in the on position. It will read on. What you want to do is pull it out, flip it over, and to read off. Now what I would do is just, I just pull it out and put it on top of the box so there's no no doubt that there's no power going through there. And just to see, let you show you, just to see how this looks like, there you are, your two fuses. Now is the part where where to mount the unit. Uh, on a Bryant, it seems like there's a plenty of room. I could do it horizontally. Yeah, that would, that would work. I could do it vertically. Seems like that would work too. But I am going to mount mine on the outside of the house on the wall. Um, mainly because it has uh, there are some diagnostic LEDs in there that flash. And if I had mounted here behind the panel I won't be able to see those lights um, but there is a Bluetooth app that will also give you diagnostics 
but uh, I think it'd be better for me to mount outside on the wall. And the great that's the great thing about the Bryant is that this is facing the house, so there's plenty of um, if I put it up here, there's plenty of cable. So that should not be an issue. So let me get that mounted up and I'll come back. Okay, have it installed, mounted on the wall. And, uh, looks like there's plenty of wire. So the orange will go to the blue. The black goes over to the black. And the brown and white will go to the yellow. So, yeah, plenty of wire. Um... So I had to drill, like, I think a 7 8 hole for this gland to go, go through and using a step drill. Now, this piece here, the gland, came with the install kit from uh, Micro Air. Now, would I recommend buying this kit? Uh, I think the kit cost uh, around ten, eleven dollars, and probably for my installation, I'll probably just use like maybe ten percent of all the parts in there. Um, honestly, I think if you're a do-it-yourselfer, handyman type person, you probably have, like I said, um, ninety percent of the parts already. The only part I probably didn't have is the um, this this uh, part here gland and uh, you know it's probably a couple bucks from the hardware store but everything else you know like electrical connectors wire ties um, all that stuff yeah you'd probably have it laying around the house somewhere so anyways we're uh, getting closer to wiring up I think the yeah, before we wire it up let's um Test it without the micro air, see how many amps it's pulling. Okay, so let's uh, do before and after. Let's see how many amps this uh, pulls before the EasyFlex is installed. I have the fuse put back in so we have power. If I push the contactor in, it should start it up. And I have my fuel piece set on in rush. So let's push the button and let's see how much it pulls. Ninety-three. So we'll compare that to after I have wired in the easy start. Now the fun begins. Wiring. Before I uh, touch any of this, let's check to make sure that the fuse is pulled and discharge the capacitor. So here's the fuse. That's pulled. And to a discharge capacitor, all you have to do is take a insulated screwdriver and we just short out between the terminals. Yep, yeah, doesn't look like there's any energy stored in there. So what it is, what a capacitor is, it's just like a big battery. It stores energy. And if there's any uh, energy in the capacitor, it will shock you, uh, it can shock you big time. So uh, to prevent that nasty surprise, it's best to um, short out the terminals up top to drain it. Research and planning is necessary to identify the connections. On the Micro Air website, there's a diagram for a carrier heat pump. So here it is. That matches uh, the wiring of my Bryant air conditioner. 
but a shortfall is it does not show the AC wire colors. So to make 100% sure that you're connecting in the right place, there's a more detailed wire diagram on the inside of the AC cover. So here's the, here's the diagram. Let's see, Let that focus. And as you can see, like first here's the blue, here's a capacitor, here's a compressor, and here's a contactor. And so here's the blue water, it connects to the hermetic side of the capacitor. Um, you see the yellow wire that powers the compressor from the contactor. So yeah, so I need to back check that. And um, I also, uh, drew up a plan of attack where to connect so in my case it's going to be the orange wire to the hermetic side of capacitor the black wire will go to uh, the contactor and the brown and the white wire will go to um, this it will be spliced into this um, yellow wire. Now on the brown wire it tells you not to splice it here but to splice it here, the one the wire that goes into the to the compressor. Um, it also in the micro air instruction says to connect the black and white wires to the contactor behind the screw heads you know, do not use the spades up here. And I think it says if it's going to be more than 18 amps, you need to do it here. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what I'm pulling, but just to be safe, I'll use a ring connector or a fork connector. And for the yellow one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this wire connected I'm going to cut it somewhere up here and this use a, a red um, wire nut to uh, connect the white on this side of the splice and the brown to this side of the splice. So I'll go ahead and make the connections off camera so not to bore you and also my uh, crimping and splicing skills are embarrassing. I'll be back to show you the results and we'll be ready to measure the inrush amps with the Easy Start installed. Alright, the wiring is done. So you can see that the orange wire goes to the hermetic side of the capacitor, the black one black wire is um, connected under the screw head and the brown and white wire are spliced into this yellow wire, the white leading into the contactor and the brown going to the windings. So let's, I got the field piece all set up to check the inrush. So let's go ahead, give it a shot, see if it works. <laughs> Wow, six amps. That's quite a big difference from what, 93 amps we had before we had the Easy Start installed. Quite a difference. Now, uh, the Easy Start will take about five cycles uh, to learn the characteristics of the unit. So this number might change a little bit, but it'll be still a lot less than was before. Um, one thing that I noticed when uh, wiring up is that the, these two screws were loose or not tight. So if you're in here with the power disconnected, you might as well uh, check those screws and make sure they're down tight. They probably got loose this from over the years of uh, you know, thermal cycling. So I think that about does it. Um, 
hope this helped. If you had any uh, questions, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I'm not a electrician, so I'll take it for what it's worth, but I'll, you know, see what I can do. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.